I gotta say, for the lowest price 15 inch pen display on the market, I wasn't expecting much, but the Gaomon PD 1560 won me over. This is your standard drawing tablet. It is a screen or a monitor that plugs into a Mac or PC that allows you to draw on it using the pen that it comes with. Out of the box, this screen looks fantastic. Usually I have to dive in, I have to adjust and fiddle with settings, but this screen, the color and everything looked really good from the get go. Not just the colors, but the contrast was spot on too. If you don't like it, you can still jump in and adjust it with the buttons that are located along the side. Like pretty much every other non Wacom tablet out there, the screen is HD, 1920 by 1080. There are also hotkeys along the side. I like hotkeys. They're also completely adjustable if you're willing to dive into the settings. Also, this tablet comes with a bunch of stuff. There's a bag you can slide it into. There's also a stand, even a screwdriver to attach that. Check it out. They even sent me two of these drawing gloves. You know what that means. Dance party. <laughs> This one's got like one finger and this gun's got two. As I mentioned, it also has the stand, which you can screw in yourself. It's a solid stand. This is the same exact stand that comes with pretty much every Cintiq alternative that I've used this year. It's a good stand. It adds some bulk, but there is a lever release lock that is on the back, which makes it totally adjustable. And it's rock solid. Your tablet isn't going anywhere. And that brings us to this, this pen. It is a battery powered pen. It comes with a USB charging cable. It seems like these things stay charged for forever. I used it for a couple days and then I had a marathon drawing session on Saturday that lasted about 12 hours. I have no idea how much charge is left in it, but I didn't have to charge it up midday or anything. Battery powered pens usually mean wobble when drawing slow angled lines. It's really hard to get this pen to wobble. The pressure curve feels really good too. It's consistent, holds pressure around curves. The pen overall is a lot better than I expected and might be one of the best non Wacom drawing pens I've used. It's also one of the first pens out there with 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. I reviewed two of the new Huions a few months back and this seems to be on par with that but with slightly less wobble. I've mentioned this before but I can't tell the difference with that many levels of pressure sensitivity. Once you get above 2000 it's it's just harder to tell. It's nice to have but it's not really noticeable. Also as I expected the initial activation rate on this pen is a little too tight. If you're sketching very lightly on the screen you're gonna have to start to apply more pressure in order to make any kind of line show up. So if you're a light sketcher be aware of that. Next up, how is the Parallax? Well, it's definitely there, but it's pretty much on par with other tablets that I've tested out and everything in its category. Parallax is the displacement between where your pen hits the screen and where the cursor appears on that screen. It's just one of those things that you get used to after using a tablet for a while. Does this pen have tilt support? The answer here is no. Most of these pens on these Wacom alternatives do not, and this one is no different. Also, if you're the type of person who looks for a racer around the back, you're not going to find that here either. It also comes with this handy dandy pen stand and if you open it on up there's some extra nibs in there for you too. And this is a first, it comes with a bag thingy. It's a good sized bag, you can fit your head in it, but I think it's really meant for the tablet. One thing to note is the tablet itself is fairly thin so it slides right into the bag, but if you attach the stand it's not going to fit in the bag at all. And the stand is something that requires four screws in order to attach it, so it's not something you just slide on and off. I don't see myself ever taking a tablet like this anywhere, so it doesn't affect me, so I guess it's just one of those nice to have things. Now when it comes to the tablet, Tablet, there's a lot that I liked and there were a lot of things that surpassed my expectations But what are the cons? First of all, there aren't that many and these are really nitpicks First of all, I don't like the cords There's been this pattern recently with tablets where you take two or three cords and you connect them somewhere along the line So it seems like one cord, but it's not one cord at all and just connecting them in one place Doesn't actually make it cleaner or keep the cords out of your way It just makes it a lot harder to maneuver and plug this thing in part of the problem with connecting cables like this Is there's not much reach when they're all slapped together Together like that. So when I connect my HDMI cable, if I want to wrap around and connect my USB cable to the other side of my laptop, it barely fits. The power cable's also connected too, which means I had to rearrange my entire desk just to plug this thing in. I really would have preferred not to plug this directly into my computer, but plug it into my USB hub. But again, the USB hub was like four inches too far away. All of this could have been solved just by not connecting these cables to each other. And since they're only connected in one place, 
is they don't really clean anything up. There's still a lot of cables. The other con is the build quality. It's not bad, but it does feel inexpensive. The cords I was just talking about don't fit snugly in. They don't snap in when you plug them into the tablet. The express keys along the side are really kind of wobbly. Sometimes you're not sure if you've actually pressed that or if the key has just moved on you. Not that it affects performance all that much once you get used to it, but it's definitely noticeable. You also have this matte screen protector. It's very loosely attached. You can see the tape holding it on. I've had these kind of matte screen protectors on tablets before, and in fact, I reviewed one over the summer and someone said, why'd you take off the screen protector? I didn't know it was a screen protector. And honestly, it looks like something that's shipped in order to protect the screen during shipping, not something you'd want to draw on. I did draw on this one and it works pretty well, but it definitely feels very cheap. So those are my cons, mostly nitpicks, mostly little things that aren't gonna slow you down too much, but things you should be aware of. Overall, I think what really matters with a tablet like this is the pen and how the pen performs. And I think this one performs extremely well. I was very happy with it and it exceeded my expectations. I have a list over on my website of my favorite Wacom alternative tablets out there. The XP Pen 16, currently or previously was number one on this list. I think this edges out the XP pen just by a little bit, mostly because it's about 70 to $80 cheaper, but it does pretty much the same thing and the pen is slightly better. Of course, the XP pen feels more solidly built, so it's a trade-off. It's so close though. When you compare this to say the Cintiq Pro 16, now we're talking about something totally different. The screen on the Cintiq Pro blows this thing out of the water because it's a full 4K screen. Screen, there's no parallax, it's really a premium device. But it's almost four times more expensive. So if you really don't have the money to spend on something like the Wacom, this is definitely a great alternative for you. So that's the review. I hope that answered most of your questions. If they haven't, there's a way to solve that. It's the comments section down below. Let me know what questions you have. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. As always, you guys keep this channel afloat. Let me create great videos every week. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.